What's going on guys? Bladezilla here and today we've got a real cool one to check out in the Sheergorf lineup. A uh, new knife that was just released uh, about a week ago that I just got my grubby little mitts on that I wanted to show you. So as always this is a pretty casual walkthrough of the knife. Bit of an overview on it, nothing too detailed or uh, specific. I don't want to go down that road because, let's be honest, you guys are already calling me out enough on a lot of my BS that I tend to do. Um, as a reminder, this knife is for sale on bladezilla.ca, where I post a bunch of this stuff, and I will quickly do a quick shout-out on the site here to show you that we have currently a bunch of stuff, a bunch of inventory that is available, and uh, follow me on Instagram as well if you want to check stuff out. Uh, we are in Canada, and anything that is on the site is in stock, ready to ship. So, this guy itself, let's get into detail, we'll get into comparisons. I'm kind of doing this video fairly rushed because I just want to get it out to you to check out. I'm so excited about it, and uh, it's actually the first time I've got a pretty healthy inventory on this one, which is nice. So anyway, let's get into detail. Take a look at the knife, talk about it, and compare. Try not to get that bead to flip. There we go. So there's the knife. Let's do some quick measurements. If I can find my tape measure. There we go. This is a standard F3 NS uh, measurement. So we should be four inches on the blade and eight and three quarter or eight and five eighths, somewhere in that overall. Take a look at the measuring tape and you tell me uh, what you think, but uh, sharpened, yeah, about four inches, maybe a hair less, and eight and five eighths overall, plus the bead, which in this case is a beautiful, beautiful bead, and uh, you know, before we go down the road of talking about this knife, full disclosure, I think this is the best looking special edition on this. Um, of this knife. So this is the F3 Ignis, which uh, Ignis sounds a lot like Ignite, and uh, as you would know it, there's going to be four different flavors of this series. So we have the Aquatic, the Terrace, the Ignis, and uh, the Wind. I don't know what they're going to call the Wind, but each version is kind of a specific carbon handle, or carbo tie, is it a carbo tie, or carbo something build on it? And um, each one will, I believe, have a different blade. I'm not sure if they're going to maintain that into the Wind series. I know there's a lot of speculation around what they're actually going to do with it. But, um, yeah, so what are they calling this? Techno Carbon Handles. I thought it was Carbo Tie, but Potato Tomato. I'll probably get called out for a Potato Tomato. Um, let's kind of go over this knife. So, luckily at the time, at the filming time of this one... I actually have the other two still in my possession. So let's pull those out. So the Aquatic is probably the most desirable in the secondary right now, which is this knife, which is blue, aqua, water. Looks good, right? But the beauty in this one is that it comes with a Vanix blade. So it's a little, little rarer in that regard, because you don't see a lot of Vanix in the market. So there's your there's your aquatic. Then we have the Terrace, which is this guy. I've done a video on this exact knife, uh, which is, I believe, Earth, which comes with that awesome S90V blade, which looks awesome. Nice little special edition. And then they have the correlating bead on them as well. So there you go. Um, that is your lineup currently. And then we'll have wind. And uh, my speculation on wind, boy. So we have Vanex, M390, and S90V. To me, we're probably going to see what? M398, maybe? Um, what what blade is wind? What like I, I can't even think of what a wind material would be like. Something thin, something... Uh, I'm guessing the color is probably a, a white variant, white, like a very light white. Um, but that's just my speculation. 
So let's put these guys away back into the padded case and uh, start doing some comparisons like I like to do and talk about the blade itself. So first and foremost, let's do the Sebenza small and large and reminder the camera is on an angle. So there's your small Seb. And then when I put it up here, it'll look even smaller, right? So there's your small Sebenza. We will grab your large Sebenza as well. This particular one that I have is a Thunderbird Gear, which is an awesome version, glass blasted. Love this Sebenza. And it's just broken in so nicely. So there's your two Sebenzas. In the Shiragoroff lineup, we're going to kind of position this in a couple different settings. So let's grab the Neon Zero. There's your Neon Zero. Let's grab your F95, because these are production comparison pieces. Uh, now if I can find an F95 off camera here, there we go, right in the corner. There's your F95. And I'm just going to move this down. Hopefully that's in frame because we got room for one more big, big daddy here. The 111. Which, as a reminder for those who are new to Shira Goroff, 111 is the blade length. So we have the 95 is a 95 mil blade, the 111, obviously 111 mil. Uh, this guy, I believe, is the same blade length as the F95, and then the neon comes in a little bit shorter. So there's your production comparison, which is cool. And then, because we're super awesome today, we're going to compare it with a couple uh, custom division knives as well, because I feel like that's only fair to do. So let's grab the fantastic and newly acquired to the channel uh, Mini Quantum. We're going to give that one lots of room. We're going to kind of position this one up a little bit. We're going to grab the Stellar sprint run which is an absolute gorgeous piece as well um, love this knife for the size and once again remember things are at an angle so if I move this guy around it's gonna change the physical layout of how big things look but you get a pretty good sense of things and uh, why don't we do a magnetic because we're in the carbon fiber world with this beautiful F3 let's put that down so there's your there's your magnetic to kind of tailor off the lineup. So there's a couple different pieces to kind of compare them with and two. And I'm going to gently remove these so that I don't cause myself a panic attack if one of these should happen to touch because that is how I lose sleep at night. So anyway, there we go. That is your F3 uh, Ignis or uh, Fire. So let's talk about the knife a little closer here. What makes this guy so unique compared to the rest of the lineup? Um, obviously we touched base on the, the colors of the, the carbon fiber handle, but when we're talking sheer Goroff, they don't do anything half-ass. So when you look around this knife, you'll notice absolutely gorgeous and perfect centering on the blade. You'll notice they do over and above milling. That is, you know, they really don't have to do. It's not going to add function, it just adds beauty to it. And if we were looking at that, like just look at the clip, all these horizontal lines right here that are just done so, so well. These little, um, the, the edges of the carbon are all drilled and uh, machined to be round and even. In hand, let's see how this guy fits. So remember, I'm an XL glove. The camera's freaking out. I apologize. I'm kind of filming this next to a window, and the, the light right now is not the best. But uh, in hand, feels absolutely great. You know, uh, Metal Complex said the F3 was his favorite knife from Shirogoroff, and it's so easy to see why when you put one of these in your hands, because it just fits in it absolutely beautifully. I've got lots of room left here for the corner of my hands. I could probably wear a glove, a work glove with this, no problem. The blade stock is nice and thick, but still rounded on top. 
don't know if you guys can see that. You know, I like having a flat top, but I also like having some rounded edge just in case uh, you do want to choke up on it. The jimping. Now this is one thing I did want to actually take a look at and compare between a couple of the models. I don't know if they have the same jimping, but because I have them, I'm going to assume they are all the same. But it is a question that I get asked between the models, blah, 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 what... Uh, What's the difference? Is there any width difference? Is there, you know, potential to blade swap and kind of make your own? You know what? I obviously don't encourage that given that these are special edition knives. But, uh, you know, there's also people who carry uh, full customs without any regard for them. So I'm going to go ahead and say the, uh, the blade jimping is identical all the way around. The, uh, I believe... It wouldn't shock me. It looks like all the dim dimensionally they should be the same. So I'm going to go ahead and put that up here until we start comparing or comparing some of the beads. Obviously, you don't need that in the paint in the frame. Now these guys do, I believe, have the captive pivot system on it, which would be this kind of. As you can see on one side, it's got a collar. So this will have that um, beautiful detail work on the flipper tab as well. As you can kind of see. Now, one thing is, I should say, on the Shergoroff stuff, they have a tendency, they, they move this flipper tab around a little bit. So, if I grab, say, a Quantum, which, uh, where is my Quantum? There we go. You see how on the Quantum here, that flipper tab is kind of pushed right into the edge of the knife? You know, that's not by accident. That's a nice little ergonomic advantage there and some people love that and because it's just so smooth and you you kind of fall into the flipper tab on the f95s or on the uh on the f95 much like the f3 and s they move it back so you know I, I personally prefer this style because your finger kind of falls into that little spot there and it allows you to kind of kick it out a little easier that's me though. Um, some people love the F3, some people love the Quantum, some people love the Neon. I just like a flipper tab that kind of comes back a little bit in comparison, right? It's not a big deal, but um, I feel like ergonomically it fits me a little better, but some people love that because now it's not getting caught on anything in their pocket either on the Quantum, okay? Not a big deal either way, just something that uh, is so cool about these knives. Now, comparison to the F95, the Neon, etc., this is obviously a liner lock knife, it's not a uh, frame lock. So what does that mean for you? Well, it's gonna be, well, it, it's just, it's a little more left-hand friendly, I'd say. Uh, you can't move the pocket clip around, obviously, but uh, in, in hand, in my left, try not to cut myself here, it's it's just a little easier, I'd say. You know, obviously it's meant to be right hand carry, and the way that pocket clip hides into your the palm of your hand, it just fits real nice. Ooh, hey man, every time I pick one of these guys up, I just wonder why I don't carry one of these. Not necessarily one of these special editions. You could obviously carry it, but like they do make F3 and S's um, in just plain carbon, and uh, that follow the same kind of structure and. Ergonomically, I, I totally get what Metal Complex is going on about in his infinite wisdom. Just fits your hand so nicely. Like I said with that blade, jimping's beautiful, position's beautiful. It's got that nice little tip on the top there to kind of add some strength. I like that as well. Now, this guy, as I mentioned, is M390 on the blade. Uh, to some people's disappoint, uh, disappointment, I guess. You know, they uh, they did say they would have preferred, you know, M398, or uh, there were some talks of because it's fire going magna cut. You know, magna, magnum, mag, magma, magma cut would have been cool to see magna cut, but you know, it's it. M390. Remember, these are Russian-made knives, and uh, CPM Magna Cut is not a Russian company. Uh, so supply could be a bit of a hindrance there. I personally, you know, I'd love to see something real cool like 
you know, S1, like S110V or 398 would be cool. Just something a little different than M390. But please remember, these are a limited special edition knife. M390 has nothing at all wrong with it. And they're made uh, to the same level as their production knives, but they come with this cool bead, which, you know, that's probably 100 to, I don't know, 150 bucks, depending on the size. I don't know the market on those. Those also will be limited. Keep that in mind. Um, so you're, you're priced not even that much higher. Uh, table, I think these were 11... I can't remember if they were 11 or 11.50 US plus shipping and tax and all that stuff. Um, so you, like you're in the ballpark of a production knife, but it comes with that bead, which is cool. You're uh, in a limited kind of color profile, which is awesome. M390, which is nothing to shake a stick at. And remember, M390 for the longest time was kind of like the best. So there's nothing wrong with it. A lot of people love that steel. And, uh, you know, why bother messing with a good formula? So I don't know. I, I don't know what the big deal is by picking M390. Uh, I'm sure there's a reason for it, but I'm assuming you've got to stick it in one of the four uh, special editions, and they just happen to go with fire, which is cool. I don't know if you're going to see this either. How good does that fire profile look? It's like the closest thing to actual fire in the light. Now, remember, I've got a fixed light above me, above me sorry. And, uh, oh my god. This is, I think this is the nicest looking one of the three, in my opinion. Black, gold, and red just work so, so well together. And I didn't expect it to look this good. Um, between the three, like uh, the Aquatic, it's a bit loud and it's a little bit light for me. Just my opinion. The Terrace is pretty bland and kind of basic. It's obviously gold, right? But the red is what pops so nice and these yellow kind of crackling, kindling kind of look to it. I think that looks absolutely nuts. Um, before I get these guys off the table, let's look at the beads. And this is going to be hard to do without bumping things, so I'll show you individual beads if it wants to focus. So that is the Ignis, or the Fire. Looks good. I don't know how close I can get. But uh, hopefully you're in 4K so you can see that. And on the other side it's standard, right? Looks real nice. The Aquatic Bead is like these little waves, which looks great. Once again, if it wants to focus, it'd be nice. Little kind of waves. And then the bead on the terrace. Looks good. Also a little, uh, what would that be? Are they all kind of similar? This one's kind of waves. This is like dirt rolling something. And this one actually looks like fire. That's cool. So three different beads for three different editions, which I think is a nice touch. Now, if we're going to go into other details on the knife, uh, so we've got obviously titanium liner lock construction. Uh, what that means is inside this, let's get that guy off the camera. Inside this, as you can see, underneath the carbon fiber, underneath the beautiful carbon fiber, is a titanium liner. Now, this guy, I believe, is milled out inside to save weight, which hopefully you can see inside. There's like uh, almost like a running snake kind of around it to add strength and structure but it takes away the, the weight, which is awesome. We've got a um, insert, metal lock bar insert on this guy as well, which aids in both uh, replacement when the time comes, if you do wear that out, because you're using the knife so much um, in the world to hopefully pry liquid magma off rocks in Hawaii. I'm just kidding. But yeah, as you wear that out, you can obviously have that serviced at a spa and replace that lock bar insert. Or, it actually tunes the material between the blade and the uh, titanium on the inside so that it's nice and smooth and you don't get any lock stick or lock up as you're kind of going through uh, the service life. Now, this particular version runs on their multi-row bearings, MRBS, which should be written on the inside of this handle somewhere. Um, oh, there you go. It's kind of in front of the backspacer here. See that little MRBS logo right under my little finger there? So... Usually they put it up here, but I don't know why they're doing it there. That's cool. Is that the same on all of them? It appears to be. Yep. So that's cool. Um, 
So multi-row bearings, now think of multi-row bearings as, um, you know, you have your single row bearings, which is a standard bearing, which is a ball on a track, typically, in a circular kind of configuration. Multi-row bearings is kind of like a pinwheel, where there's like one, two, three in a row in a, in a line, and it's kind of spread like the rays of coming off the sun. If you were a kid drawing the sun, the little lights, or the little rays coming off would be like three bearings in a row. So to me, that adds a little bit of structure, more side to side structure on that, on the load on the blade. Um, but to a lot of people, it just means it's just a little more controlled, a little smoother. The thing comes down like it, you can put it usually anywhere in the middle and it won't drop unless you want it to. Uh, Shiro's are known to like float home. Um, that's kind of what I'll say is they like to float home. And uh, that is a result of those multi-row bearings. They feel so good, and uh, even compared to single row bearings, they're incredible. Uh, single row is typically found on their lower, not lower, I guess, their, their starter series, which in a lot of cases is higher end than most people's high end series. Um, but from single row, they go multi row bearing. Then they get into single row roller bearings, and then into uh, double row roller bearings. So um, I have yet to experience double row roller bearings myself, uh, but one of these days I'm sure. I'll cross paths with a knife with it. As far as roller bearings go on other models, they are by far my preference. Um, but single row and multi row bearings are nothing shy of absolutely brilliant for what they are. Uh, those bearings themselves, for reference, are a standard size. So if you do lose them, I want to say they're one and a half mil ball. So you can get them, or um, there's a couple other companies that are doing replacements. And you can do kind of do like hop up kits and all kinds of stuff. But uh, that's my ADHD kind of going off the rails. Let's just reel this one in here. Um, the back spacer, now they, they are saying this is, uh, what did they call it? I think it's a bronze anodized. Uh, bronze anodized titanium back spacer, yeah. Now, although the original literature said it was gold. So um, I guess they're just referring to the color there. I, I was actually wondering, I'm like, I wonder if they actually gold plated this. Now, something that uh, all three of these guys have done is matched the back spacer with the pocket clip. So as you can kind of see, maybe I'll just throw this down like that. So as you can see, there's the next one. Terrace, focus my man, come on. There's the terrace. So as you can see, it's not just the carbon scales that are, that are different, but they're also matching the backspacer, they're matching the bead that it comes with to the backspacer, and the pocket clip. So you kind of get those three, uh, three matches all around, which looks really, really cool. And that's kind of adding to the collectability of all three. But as I'm doing these videos, I always do like to look around and compare the little, little things, because on paper, I imagine they're supposed to be very similar, but in reality, they always kind of change things somewhere. Um, so yeah, the, the bronze anodized titanium backspacer looks fantastic. That's a mouthful. Um, real functional. I love, uh, I love having knives that have the backspacer. Some of them, they're kind of going away from it. Um, like the F95. It's kind of just doing the standoff, as you can kind of see here. If it wants to focus, come on, dude. There you go. So they're kind of just doing that. You know, as you kind of go up the production line, they're starting to add and take away certain little features. I really, really like having a backspacer slapped in there. It just looks like it just kind of fills the package out so nicely. And then, as is on the other line here, we have this uh, nice little kind of cutout behind the flipper tab. And I'll just kind of soak this up. There we go. So as you open the, the flipper tab, as you shoot this guy out, your finger falls into this nice soft spot here. It's all machined out and just looks great. It's, I've never had an issue with that. How good does that look, guys? The tolerances there are unreal. It's kind of hard to show, but like, see how it's... This camera's freaking out. You see how the uh, the cutout's kind of expanded here, right? That's just enough room for that flipper tab to kind of whoop down into there. Isn't that cool? That looks so good. 
So there you go. And then obviously the uh, we've got a nice kind of a rolled cutout. I always like to show this. So you can kind of see this nice little um, on the lock bar here. You can kind of see how it sticks up a little bit compared to the other side. And that's real nice when you're when you are holding it, but also when you're finding that, trying to unlock it, right? It sticks up from the other side. So that uh, it's just easy to engage, disengage, etc. It just works out so well. And it's it's something that if you get real close on the detail, which I'm not going to show because I don't have the lens for this, but you can actually see a bunch of mill work on all these spots. So there's like horizontal lines. I'll try. I'll try to show, but if you're in 4K, you might be able to see it. I'm looking at a one inch screen as I'm filming these things, so um, hopefully you can see it. But yeah, the detail on that lock bar is just nuts. So nice, and it's uh, curved, so it's nice and smooth. There's no hot spots on this at all, as as is normal. So now, do we have inside? I was wondering, like, I'm kind of wondering on these liner locks, like, or inset liner locks on paper. I'm always wondering, do they have a, an over travel stop in there or not? Because, like, in theory, the frame provides that, and, but you almost wonder, do you rely on that, or is there a mechanical stop? I can't see inside to tell. Um, I'm assuming not. But I am just curious on that. Um, what else do we have inside here? So we've got the matching clip with the backspacer, which looks good. Now, the lanyard is something we didn't really talk about, the lanyard hole. So if you wanted to remove this, which a lot of people will, um, just because it is very highly collectible, this bead, to the point where some people remove these, they'll sell them for double of what a normal bead would cost. Um, if you are going to buy this, please don't cut the string uh, or the cord. Don't cut it and throw it out or something. Like, just you know, take the time, untie it, keep it all in original, because people, they, that's going to be very highly desirable um, to somebody down the road. If not, just keep it as a whole package as is. I think it looks so sharp itself. Just the red, uh, I think it looks so good. Um, but if you are going to take it off, you obviously have the ability to run whatever back or uh, lanyard you want with that nice integrated backspacer slash um, lanyard hole drill out, whatever you want to call that. I think that looks so good. Don't you think? The way they've done that versus like drilling a hole right through the side of the handle, um, kind of like the Stellar does. So if you see the Stellar, See how that's just drilled right through? A lot of people don't like that. So in this case, they kind of build it into the back spacer, and uh, it just looks real good and sharp. I've got no concerns with that whatsoever. And uh, you know, if you do take it off, it doesn't look it doesn't look hideous. It hides it well, which is awesome. And then sheer gore off logos. So obviously, they're putting the the branding on the blade. I'm gonna make. A bit of a wild guess here and say at some point they're going to transition off of the blade because on the magnetic here and even the Stellaris they started to kind of integrate this little logo into the handle and I think that looks so flippin good pun intended so I'd like to see them kind of go that route and it adds another layer of customization and obviously another layer of cost to kind of put that there instead of on the blade but for the time being, you know, you're an M390 blade, you've got a Sheer Goroff logo on it, which looks great. So other than the, um, so other than the logo on the blade there, uh, there really isn't any other logo anywhere else on the knife other than on that bead, which, uh, which is what is so cool about keeping that thing. So don't throw that out for the love of God. And we've got, no, these are not numbered. I know that's something that people really wish because there's not really a consensus on how many of these there are. I'm going to go out on a limb and say there's 100. I'm, I'm assuming they did 50 and 50, Russia, US, to recon. So I'm going to say 100 because that wouldn't shock me. That seems to be kind of what they do on special editions. But um, who knows, right? I... Uh, I am only one person here that's uh, talking to you about knives. I don't manufacture them. I don't visit the warehouse and talk to the owner, so I can't, uh, I can't be exactly sure what the exact number is. But the logo definitely could be something that they could put on there, and I think that'd be super cool. 
Now, on the rest of the knife, we obviously have uh, their proprietary kind of flathead screwdriver type hardware. Now, just a reminder, guys, you know, uh, don't use a screwdriver on this because it is wider spaced. Um, and, you know, it is proprietary, it is a little, little fatter, but if you're going to use anything to open these things up, you could probably use like a folded credit card or uh, even a penny. A penny is going to be a softer material. They're not, you know, they're. I'm assuming they're factory Loctited with like a blue Loctite. So don't do anything you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't do to a, a high-end, high-demand knife because it is pretty easy to mess these pivot or these uh, these uh, contact points up or to show wear. We're just lucky that it's not anodized like blue or red or something because then it would really show. But uh, you know, get the right tool. It's uh, it's not crazy. This is kind of what that tool would look like. Uh, it's got all the bits you need internally and the handle here and uh, it gives you a little access to kind of fix it at a nice position if you do want to provide a little torque if you've got a crack into it and break through the Loctite. Um, I suggest that especially if you're going to own multiple shear Goroffs and be utilizing more than uh, a couple of these knives. It just makes it so much easier when you do want to uh, service them. Now from a service perspective these guys are obviously uh, I think they come with like almost like a wax on the bearings. Um, most people actually, if you're going to want to do a true service, I think they actually don't even re recommend putting anything on them. Um, you just run them raw dog. So degrease them and just run them dry. Uh, they seem to work really well, really, really well that way. But if you wanted to use a light oil, I can't see that being too big of a problem. So that is kind of it. Um, what else can we talk about on this, guys? We talked about the clip, we talked about the ergonomics, we talked about uh, the weight of it. I don't think I mentioned the weight. It's a 5-ounce knife. A 5-ounce knife with a 4-inch blade, so it is not by any means uh, super light, but it's also not super heavy, given the size. So, nothing too crazy there. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. What else do I got for you? I talked about the milled pockets, I talked about the matching clip and backspacer, the collectible bead. Um, I think that might kind of wrap up this knife, unless there's something else I want to compare with it, which I don't. Oh, you know what? Let's compare this knife while I have it. Uh, the F3 Outdoor. So there's this. So a couple comparisons. A lot of people don't know this or uh, don't care to know this. So you, you'd think, okay, this outdoor model is uh, essentially a clipless F3 NS. It's like, that's awesome. They're not, okay? They're different. You see anything there that's a little different? How about just the overall uh, width of the backspacer? It should be a dead giveaway. The, uh, the pattern of it is, is obviously different. The size of them are different. But more than anything, look at those blades. How different are the thicknesses of those blades, man? There's definitely something there. Keep that in mind. I still think that these F3 Outdoors are going to be collector's pieces because there's only 50 of them. It is the best left-hander knife that is really made, in my opinion, from Shiro because there's no clip on it. Um, super smooth, super visible, and uh, the, the green is actually a lot more subdued than a lot of people think. It almost looks like a black at certain uh, certain lights so I think that is a cool knife but I just wanted to show because a lot of people don't realize that these are these are uh, very different between the two but so similar but different and you should be able to just see it in the spacing of the two knives or the two uh, right there you should be able to see that spacing that's too funny I, I love showing these things because uh, why not We've got nothing better to do. Um, so that might be kind of it. We've got, uh, oh, the other thing too, that the others don't have, do they? The Terrace might. Yes, they've matched that. Uh, oh no, they did on the, I didn't even realize that. So we've got a fourth item that's color matched. So on the collar, see the perimeter around the hardware? On this guy is matched to be the blue. This guy is matched to be that kind of gold anno. And on the terrace, it is matched to that light browny earth soil color. That's cool. The things you know, I always just thought that this one came with like a cool 
color on it. That's nice. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing this knife literally. I just took it out of the box. So I, this is the first time looking at it myself. And I have the unfortunate nature of looking at it through a one-inch screen that I can't even pick up on a lot of these details because I'm too focused on making sure that I'm actually framing things and focusing it for you guys. So there you go. I think that will probably do it for the... Uh, for the F3NS Special Edition Ignis, or uh, Fire as they call it, um, which is a super cool blade. I'm so fortunate to have these. I will have uh, some of these in the, available in the store right away for purchase. If anyone wants to check it out, visit bladezilla.ca in Canada. And uh, if you are outside of Canada, please just send me an email, sales at bladezilla.ca, and I will certainly make, uh, we'll talk if uh, it needs to go somewhere um, somewhere else. So we'll leave that alone. Otherwise, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out the video. I really appreciate you guys. Um, it, I'm always uh, humbled by how many people are leaving comments and, uh, you know, you're actually making some pretty cool friendships and relationships off of just talking about knives, which is a passion of mine. So it's, uh, it's so cool. So I really appreciate you guys. Um, yeah. I think I'll leave it there. Any questions, let me know below. Okay, guys, thanks for stopping by. Have yourselves a good week, and we'll talk soon. Peace.